the story is super fun. Uh, so there, there's this uh, group in Amsterdam, the Anarcha Feminist Group, the AFG, and they're basically using squatting as a means to prevent gentrification, which I think is kind of fucking awesome, right? Uh, so squatting was legal in Amsterdam, right? As long as the building had been unoccupied for about a year, you could move your stuff in there and you 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 just squat in there until somebody buys up the property and so on and so forth. Uh, and then I think they got to go through a process. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I think they got to go through some kind of process to 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 legally evict squatters out of uh, out of their 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 homes, essentially. And I think in in New York City, is it a city law or state law? I can't remember. But I do remember listening to this podcast where it's a little complicated to do, and it falls into a little bit of a gray area in the United States, as as do most things. Uh, it's a little complicated to do, but if you have been squatting in a particular place for, I think, like up to three years or something like that, I might not have the numbers correctly, uh, that place is legally yours, and they can't they can't evict you. You obviously have to prove that you've been you've been there for that amount of time that you have done a restoration of some kind to bring the place up to code and all that kind of stuff. Um, there was a group that did that, I think, back in the 80s and 90s in New York. They took over this warehouse, cleaned it up, made it like a place for homeless people. And it was like this big ass warehouse where a bunch of them lived and took care of it. Fixed up the electricity, winterized it, you know. And nobody could kick them out because they'd been there for so long and they'd done all this work to like make this place habitable that the city neglected, that the, you know, the, the, the landlords neglected. And so they were like, all right, that's yours. So that's kind of cool. In Amsterdam, it was legal. Uh, it was used as a, as a, as a protest tool in the sixties and seventies to prevent gentrification. So, so now these, these, the, uh, the AFG, the uh, anarcho-feminist group is doing that same thing. And in 2010, they actually made it illegal. They made they made squatting illegal in Amsterdam, which kind of sucks. Um, you know, and and the movement that they talked about in the in the 60s and 70s that did that did um use squatting as 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 a a, a tool for activists to prevent gentrification, to prevent uh, you know, people from getting evicted and things of that sort. A lot of ups and downs. I mean, that's that goes without saying. That's kind of, like movements have that kind of problem all the time. Uh, but now they're like, yeah, we're ready to kind of face police intervention because this is this is not legal at this point. But this is a way that we can prevent them from, you know, tearing down our neighborhoods and making it less affordable. Uh, you know, so they were recently forced forcefully evicted out of certain buildings at the red light district that they were trying to prevent from being gentrified. And the cops came in, plainclothes cops, dragged them out. Uh, and, you know, the claim that this group is saying is, well, they want to bring these gentrifiers in and make Whoa. Are we still good? I'm hoping you guys can see the stream. Whoa, what the crap? Okay. All right. So it seems like it's back. Seems like it's back. Well, that was weird. Uh, and, uh, did not care for it. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, so basically what they're saying is they're going to turn it, turn the red light district into the green light district. Um, it's going to be harder for sex workers to, to do their jobs. It's going to be harder for people to afford sex workers. It's going to be harder for, for, for those folks to afford, you know, working out of certain places going forward. And that's a problem. So they want to prevent that. 
they want to prevent this this uh, gentrification because this gentrification will essentially make this per this place Amsterdam. That when most people think of Amsterdam, they're like, "Oh man, like this, th it's like this utopian fucking lefty paradise where you can get a whole bunch of weed and a whole bunch of sex workers and a whole bunch of mushrooms and you can be high and drunk and getting a blowjob on the street and fucking in the street." And getting high again on the street. Like, they think, like, it's this super fucking free paradise. But as you can see, yet again, you have a bunch of capitalists coming in, trying to gentrify the place, turning it into a fucking strip mall, uh, you know, trying to trying to commodify all this crap. And and they're going to and, and now you're, you're going to see this place become more corporate and conservative. That happens everywhere. That's what they're trying to do with property. That's why they were so excited when they found out that small businesses are going to go under. Because those banks can re they foreclose on those businesses and sell that property at a much higher price than it's worth. We talked about this on Graham Elwood's show yesterday. You know, and I'm fortunate in this neighborhood that I live in that the businesses around here are like, no, fuck off. Fuck all the way off. We're not doing that shit. So right now, AFG is is squatting in a building. A lot of them have been evicted out of the red light district, but they're squatting in a building and they're and they're trying to use it as a resource center, um, so people can learn how to fight back against this sort of stuff. Uh, people can have some fine sort of sort of financial resource that they can use to you know. Um, to help themselves in uh, out out of poverty and and kind of fight the the system so that they're not they're not going to constantly get gentrified and their neighborhoods aren't going to constantly get destroyed. Yeah. So let me look at your comments. Uh, <laughs> there we got some we got some love for Vandana Shiva. That's awesome. Uh, Zozovix is asking, how do you prove it? Mailbox. That's a good question. So that was the one thing that they really didn't go into. Uh, it is how you prove it. I think if you can show that you have done some major restoration, um, like if you bring the power back, right? Like if you bring the power back uh, and, and pay the city an electricity bill, that kind of proves that Hey, you restored this. You did the restorative work. Now you're paying the electricity bill. That sort of stuff might be the way that they could do it. I think utilities are probably uh, the 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 way that they do it. Um, I could be wrong. That's a good question. I, I I'll have to go and revisit that podcast. It's a super interesting podcast. I mean, it was an NPR podcast, but I was like really surprised as to what they were covering because they were covering some like real. Like they were covering like anarchist shit, which I was just like, really? Like you, this is all right. Let's see how you guys fucking spin this thing. I think it it, it ended up being. Uh, I, I, I feel like New York eventually shut that place down for some reason. Um, go figure, right? Uh, Fred says we need Dollar Trees on every block next to Starbucks. Good for good for the squatters. <laughs> Well, Dollar Tree doesn't want to pay anybody, so they're not going to have any employees working there. So, you know. Oh, well, <laughs> if we lose Dollar Trees, uh, you know, a company that doesn't want to pay its employees properly, I'm not going to I'm not going to be too sad. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people-powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. 
Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.